Where I live, people are still generally afraid of bees. Why? Because they are afraid of being stung. But now, the question is, is that fear even justifiable? I mean, every fear is justifiable if you ask me. Can't really control how other people feel after all, and I don't want to invalidate others' feeling. Most zoologists, however, or people who are more knowledgeable in general would probably say you don't need to be afraid of bees. The one you are afraid of is actually wasps, not bees, especially hornets. Oh yeah, that one has a pretty bad reputation. But actually, how true is that sentiment? Actually, let me bring up the basic question as always. What exactly is hornet? I was thinking about how to actually answer that question, and I decided it's best to be comprehensive about it. Let's look at it taxonomically. So, animals with segmented body and jointed legs are called arthropods. Among the arthropods, there are those with three pairs of legs with a body divided into cephalon, thorax, and abdomen. Those are insecta, insects. Among the insects, there are those with two pairs of membranous wings, where the front and hind wings are connected with hook bristles called hamuli. That group is called Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera is further divided into two groups, Symphyta and Apocrita. The difference is quite simple. Symphyta doesn't have a constricted waist, while Apocrita does. Apocrita is divided into three groups, ants, bees, and wasps. Ants are quite obvious. They don't have their wings most of the time, and they have elbowed antennae. Now, let's talk about bees and wasps. Bees are herbivores. They feed on nectars and pollens. Meanwhile, Wasps are mostly omnivorous, or even carnivorous. Some people think bees are the one that can only sting once because their stinger will get stuck and it'll rip their abdomen if they fly away, so they die. But that's not exactly true. That is true for honeybees. Meanwhile, for example, bumblebees can use their stinger quite effectively, able to sting multiple times without ripping their abdomen apart. In fact, bees evolve from stinging wasps, so yeah. The key difference yet should still be easy to understand for the public is, as I said, bees are herbivores, while wasps are not. Well, technically there is a specific group of wasps that exhibit herbivory. So yeah, there is always an exception in taxonomy. Okay, but hold on a second. I've talked about bees and wasps, but what about hornets? What about yellow jackets? Well, both are technically wasps. Wasp is not exactly a real taxonomy group. Wasps are just the general terms for apocrita that are not ants and not bees. Among wasps, there is a certain family called Vespidae. These have U-shaped pronotum and typically have black and yellow coloration. Among the family members, there is a specific subfamily called Vespinae. This subfamily is characterized by their large kidney-shaped eyes and the second abdominal segment which is basally truncate with a vertical anterior face. Now this is still not specifically hornets. There are four genera, Vespa, Provespa, Vespula, and Dolicovespula. Vespa is the true hornet, while Vespula and Dolicovespula are yellow jackets. Provespa is the nocturnal wasp from Southeast Asia, typically called night hornets even though they are not hornets. The fact that they are nocturnal is important because hornets and yellow jackets are mostly diurnal. Now, the classic question of what exactly is the difference between hornets and yellow jackets? That's legitimately a common topic and I'm pretty sure there are better videos with a nice animation that talks about this. But the simplistic answer would be hornets have a relatively bigger head to eye proportion, while yellow jackets have a relatively smaller one. To put it simply, if you look at yellow jackets face, you would think they have big eyes, while if you look at hornet's face, you would think they have a relatively small eyes. Now we can focus on hornets. There are 22 species of hornets, and those are naturally distributed throughout mainland Asia to Europe. Hornets can also be found towards the Africa though. The hornets that you can find in North America are actually just introduced European hornet. There are other species that are also commonly called hornets by locals, but those are not true hornets. And of course, the Australian hornet is also not a hornet. Even though I've talked about their morphology as I explained the taxonomy, there are things that I haven't talked about, so let's move on to the morphology section as always. Hornets are big compared to other wasps. 
In fact, the Asian giant hornet is the biggest wasp that we know of, reaching up to 5.5 cm long. I did say if you look at them, they seem to have small eyes compared to yellow jackets. That's because they have large vertex, that is, this part of the head. That's why they have a large gap between the eye and the edge of the head. Obviously, they have stinger. Their stinger is relatively smooth, but it still has barbs which can be seen with microscope or other magnifying tools. Oh, by the way, only females have stingers. Males, aka drones, don't have it. Males have more segments on their antennae and abdomen, and it can be quite obvious because it does look longer when you see it side by side. Queens are very similar to worker females, but queens are bigger. And yes, if it's not obvious enough, they are you social insects. Let's talk about their lifestyle and behavior. But before that... Even though hornets are known to be vicious, they are not strictly predators. In fact, adult hornets often feed on nectars or any plant materials that contain a lot of sugar. Though, they do hunt various insects, especially when rearing larvae. Larvae are fed with masticated insects. Hornets attack prey with their jaw and stinger. Not only small insects, by the way, they can even hunt big insects like mantis. Hornets are also famous for hunting honeybees, and that is indeed true. Some often raid honeybees' nests. Some species are evolutionary adapted to seek honeybees by detecting their pheromones. Fun fact, there is an orchid called Dendrobium christianum which mimic honeybees' pheromone signal to attract hornets. Why would they attract hornets? To pollinate the orchid, of course. So yeah, hornets are also pollinators. They are not a killing machine. But still, the infamous viewpoint on them as an aggressive and violent creatures are kinda understandable to be honest. Sometimes they are just feeding on nectars, then you accidentally approach the plant and you just, you know, minding your own business. Then the hornet felt disturbed and it attacks you. That happens quite a lot. Not only that, if one of them feels threatened, or even worse, if one of them dies, it will release an attack pheromones, or distress pheromones. That will alert the entire colony basically, and that's how you get swarmed by a bunch of hornets. And that's what could kill most of you. An individual hornet sting is not exactly lethal for people who are not allergic to their venom. Do keep in mind that an individual hornet can sting multiple times though. So an individual hornet is definitely more dangerous compared to an individual honeybee for example. Their venom is not that different compared to other wasps and even bees' venom. What's noted about their venom is, it has a large amount of acetylcholine compared to other wasps and bees' venom. While it does not significantly increase its lethality to human, what it definitely increases is... The pain. Their sting is infamous for causing severe pain to human. I myself have never been stung by a hornet before, so I couldn't really say about that. I'm not looking forward to it either, so yeah, good for me I guess. Oh by the way, there is a scientific article that stated hornets can also spray their venom, and it could damage eyes, but it's not as effective as yellow jackets venom squirting. Oh and, if you didn't know about that, yeah, yellow jackets can squirt their venom. Anyway, like I said earlier, hornets are you social insects. It basically means they are highly social by the way. Hornets typically make paper nests out of wood materials, but the oriental hornet mostly nests underground. Queen is the one that starts the colony. They choose a nesting spot, then construct the nest to some extent by itself. After creating several cells, the queen lays eggs in each cell. These will hatch after around a week. The queen will feed them some insects until they pupate. After around two weeks, they will metamorphose into adults, workers to be precise. Then, these workers take over the queen's chore, and the queen can focus on reproduction. Workers will continue constructing the nest, adding more layers until it almost entirely enveloped, aside from the entrance hole of course. At this point, there are hundreds of workers in the colony. Queen will finally lay the last batch of eggs, that is, the reproductive individuals. Drones aka the males and giants aka the non-worker females. The colony will focus on maintenance and feeding the larvae. That's a future queen after all. As time goes by, worker's amount will diminish, and of course, the original queen will die. After a while, some giants will become a new queen, which will not inhabit the existing nest by the way. 
These new soon-to-be queens will leave the nest, and so do the drones. This phase is called nuptial flight, where drones and soon-to-be queens fly out of their nests and mate. Hornet drones typically seek a virgin queen from another nest if possible, and so the genetic diversity will be maintained naturally. And yeah, after mating, hornet drones will die soon enough. At this point, winter is coming, and of course, it's pretty bad for hornets. The original nest will run out of workers and food sources, and so that colony will fall off soon enough. Basically, only the new queens will survive, as they seek a place to hibernate through winter. When spring comes, the new queens will emerge, find a spot to feed on sap, and soon enough, it will seek for a nesting spot, and the cycle continues. And yeah, that is hornet. There are a lot of interesting things if we are looking at specific species. There is even a controversy surrounding the name murder hornet for the Asian giant hornet in North America, which is quite political. So if you're interested about that, I suggest reading that article out. Aside from that, I'm quite sure there will be a lot more research on hornets. So let's hope more interesting things will be discovered. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, it should be quite obvious, but Hornet from Hollow Knight Silk Song is definitely not a hornet. Anyway, enjoy your day.